normality test and looking at our distribution. That's a big part of the focus of this video. In the last video, we learned about histograms with our studio as well as kind of the QQ norm or QQ plot that's able to be done with our studio. There's an example that's up there. So now you might be interested in using a quantitative approach. But before I go too far down this path of this quantitative approach, it's important for us to understand the limitations of this quantitative approach. So quantitative approaches like the Shapiro-Wilk test that we're going to discuss here in a second, they tend to work really well with small data sets, less than 30 observations. As we start getting larger than 30, the central limit theorem comes into play. As we get to even really large numbers, hundreds of thousands, millions or more, then the kind of law of big numbers comes into play as well as central limit theorem meaning that it tends to have more of a normal shape, or if it doesn't have a normal shape, normal statistics still seem to work okay. When we use larger data sets, I still think it's important for us to look at the shape and see if it looks something like the normal distribution, because with large data sets, even a small difference from normal can show a statistically significant difference. But in terms of application, how do we deal with it? This is a relatively sized data set, a moderately sized one at least. There's probably 3,100 observations or so here. So it's definitely not a small data set. So the Shapiro-Wilk test is the test of normality that most folks view as one of the better ones. It has more power than some of the other ones. So if our data are attached, we don't have to do this object piece where we attach our object here in the command. And then we would do our dollar sign for whatever we want to look at. Say we want to look at household income. There it is. Now mine, when I do the Shapiro-Wilk test for normality, it gives me this p-value. From a previous set of videos I have, you may see something like this. So we're gonna go back to the future here and you're gonna watch a, a video of me from before. So with respect to that video from before, so I'm going to back out of there. You'll see this options parentheses psi pen equals 9999. And what will happen is it will, when it runs, it will end up fixing this so that the 2 times 2, 2.2 times 10 to the negative 16th is replaced with that value. That's really helpful. Why? Well, it's really helpful because some people intuitively like to see how small the number they're dealing with. So if you're dealing with a number like that, for a lot of people, this might be helpful. All right, so back to our studio for us. Here's our numbers. So you saw the command options, parentheses, psi pen equals 999. And then you would hit enter and I can still do it. It's not going to affect it. That's already turned on on mine. So how do we interpret the results of a Shapiro-Wilk test? We've got the data there. I'm going to zoom in. How do we interpret this? Make that bigger. W, it's 0.9044. That W statistic, some people will say when it's below 0.99 for large data, you might want to look at it like it might not be fitting the normal distribution. As it gets further and further away, like this is really far away, we would have a lot of reason to believe that this does not fit the normal distribution. We can look at the histogram. And this is the household income data. It does not look like a bell curve. 
you have the Shapiro Wilk test data, right? We've got them. What does that low p value mean? Well, whenever the p values are like less than 0 0.05, we would say that there is a statistically significant difference. A statistically significant difference from what? In this case, it's a statistically significant difference from the normal bell curve. Now again, large data sets may look like a bell curve and they may even have a high W value, a W value of 0 0.99 or 0 0.996. If you've got like a million um, observations and you still might see a significant difference from normal. In that case, with those huge data sets, you're going to want to use that W value, and as it's higher than 0 0.99, the bell curve you'll see on your histogram, and that might make you feel better about using normal statistics. There's debate out there on this topic, and you should use whichever approach is best. And if you're doing data of major consequence, you may want to consult a statistician um, for doing so. So hopefully this has been pretty easy to understand. We'll do another example here in a second, but I want you to also know that p-values do not have feelings. There's no such thing as a good p-value and a bad p-value. The values are what they are for your data. So in this case, this is a low p-value. So if you were hoping to use normal statistics because that's what you're good at, this would not necessarily lend itself um, for that approach. And the bell curve and that low W value, those three things all together um, would tell you, ah, it's probably not the best approach. There are some things though that you can do. We may have the ability on income to log transform the data, to take this from its current kind of the, these numbers here and put them onto a log scale and sometimes log transformation will make the data behave more normal. You may also put them into a model of some type at some point and as long as the overall model doesn't have a gross departure from the normal distribution you may be able to tolerate the, the, the deviance from normal. So let's look at another example. S. Wilk or Shapiro Wilk, Shapiro.test. And I've already got this attached, so we can look at something else like low birth weight. What do we see for low birth weight? We see a W value of 0 0.933, so that's still pretty far away from 0 0.99. You know, the p-value, these are large data, so it's not as important, but the data do say that it's different than normal. The histogram, we would look at that, low birth weight. We see a shape that's not really a bell curve, so I would presume that we would treat low birth weight possibly as a non-parametric distribution. Parametric means the bell curve, normal distribution. Non-parametric means not normal, not bell curved, not shaped like a, a parabola or parametric or whatever. All right, now let's do another one. Histogram, life expectancy, 1990. We've got that data there. We're familiar with it. We've already ran this one. Let's do the Shapiro-Wilk test on it or life expect 1990. It runs and it's 0 0.98259. So as this W value gets closer to one, more likely to fit the normal distribution. Most statistics will be significantly different than normal. That's just kind of the way things work out um, when you're dealing with health statistics and dealing with socioeconomic data, which we often use a lot in public health. So I'm trying to think of any data that are in here that might be normally distributed. And um, I'm not for sure. Um, so we're going to stop here with this video. 
and we'll continue on with the next video as we start to look at some other um, factors. So if you have a W value higher than 0 0.99 and um, a large data set, probably okay. If you have a smaller data set, maybe 30, 60 observations or so, and a low P value, and that's probably a bad thing for trying to use normal statistics. So we're gonna stop there. I know this is not as direct as you might want, but this interpretation is a bit more nuanced and it's the reality of, of the field. So we're gonna stop there.